But while I was there, I observed that there was a market called Banking Market. It was like the largest capital market I've ever seen. And it was reasonably priced as well because you had three countries competing in it. You had uh, the Chadians, the Cameroonians, and the Nigerians bringing their capital in. So it basically helped you back in better because if anyone was trying to be too guilty, you just go to the next to the next loss. So decided to go into the capital business, started on the studying it and learning it. And so as possible, started taking a trailer or two to Lagos. We're fighting them up with injections, then we sell them. By this, I was building different relationships with different parties. Went to Kebi as well to do the same thing. Went to Nijay, went to Tara. Because obviously what happened was somewhere along the line, I started preparing Bokolo, which is like a cattle breed. So basically, my interest from the south, from the northwest, which was actually Mbala. So I was getting Mbala market from the south, from the children. Moved to now learning about Bokolo. So I now went to Sokoto, uh, went to Kebi State, from Kebi we entered Nijay. From Nijay we went to some uh, Bela, we went to Bela market, we went to Tanda. So they have good book already. To keep the short story short, two years down the line, I had a, I had a plan to, have, to open an abattoir. Okay, once I started like, okay, what are the difficulties of opening an abattoir? You need regular supply of cows at good quality, not bony cows, good quality. So obviously you can have a turnover and your returns when you finish cutting them. Big problem. How are you going to feed? And the abattoir design was made for 200 cows a day, 50 smaller animals a day. That was the original design of the abattoir. So I'm like thinking, okay, how do you go about doing this? With all the relationships and all the land we had in Lagos and the surrounding places, for my experience, it would still be more difficult. Because you still have to use a lot of vaccination. Once the cattle cross to the south, we have more microorganisms that affect the intestine. So you need a lot more energy and a lot more work to get it to the level that you require. So, traveled a bit, went to Dubai to see the abattoir system, went to South Africa, it's now four years down the line. When I went to South Africa was when the change came through. By now I knew all the markets, mostly all the markets in, by now I knew all, mostly all the markets in Nigeria. So when I went to South Africa, I met a company called Current Farming. Is a company that's owned by a guy called John, and he's got twin twin sons. One is Glenn, and one is Bruce. They've got like a ranch that has easily, easily, I think all their heads over from Botswana, South Africa, and every other place will be over 50,000 heads. So what Glenn does, Glenn manages the abattoir side, but Bruce manages the feedlot. So that was the first time I went to the place. They welcomed me, but the fortunate thing when I went, they weren't ready to entertain me. So the next time I traveled, I spent two days in the abattoir, two or three days in the abattoir, and three days in the feedlot. So I actually saw the whole process. Obviously, I allowed me to see the staffing and the dynamics of the business itself. So in the feedlot, I actually saw this is what we need in Nigeria. Because what they do is they bed the cattle, and they take the feed to the cattle rather than take the cattle to the feed. Which is one of the problems we have in Nigeria with all these war jobs and everything, because we keep on taking the cattle to the feed. And the cattle, the feeding areas could change from any period. So maybe last year wasn't being used, utilized, it was just grass. But the full learning man, you haven't informed him that now you're growing stuff there. So still make the cattle the same place he fed his animal the last time, and it will create problems. So I decided, okay, after consulting with Glenn and Bruce, like, listen, if you really are serious about this, you need to get a feedlot in the north. That will be your starting point. Once you have the feedlot in the north, then you start thinking about the abattoir, building the abattoir and everything. But the plan is to build the abattoir in the north as well and distribute to the south. That basically means we save on transportation, on animal cruelty because obviously you don't have to transport them before you, before you slaughter them. And so many other things that you gain from it. You create employment from where you're developing as well. So the, the, the key point now was now, Glenn and Co did not want to sign an MOU at the beginning of the of the thing because basically without in what they said was there's no way we're gonna come into Nigeria with Jonathan being the head of the country. That was basically what it was. And I can assure you a week or so after Buari came in, they called me, signed the MOU, emailed it to me, and it's just been it's, it's been beautiful since then because they now introduced me to an agricultural expertise that has been helping me about the questions and the land kind of land that I need. 
the accessibility to water, accessibility to road and stuff that I did not know before. So they've been helping with that. Obviously, I just spoke to him today and I told him like, what many cattle do they have in one of the Alberto, one of their feed lots? And he said they are currently at 5,000, but they're moving it up to 15,000. That's on one feedlot, which I visited. So I know the landscape and everything we need. So the reason why I'm in, obviously, in your state is to get a big enough land to start doing a feedlot. Part of the feedlot will actually require growing feed for animals. Because what we do in Nigeria is we, we, you have a feed, you have corn and maize, and, or you have maize, wheat, maize, wheat, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> You have maize wheat. This is actually your state because those are your cows. <laughs> yeah. So you have maize wheat and whatever else that you compete with your human beings and you cannot win. If a human being wants to eat a corn and a cow wants to eat a corn, I will give it to the human being. It's just, it's just logical. So the, what I'm trying to do is actually grow feed for the animals. So I know this corn I'm growing is not for human consumption. It's for cattle consumption. I will obviously will store it and it stores well, just by storing it in pillars and everything, it stores well. So that's why I'm here, to get a big sizable line to do the project. What the most important thing as well that I learned from the South African experience is it need to involve the community seriously, seriously, not leave service, involve the community. You understand? Know and the advice they gave is right, rather than deal with governments that change from time to time, deal with the community and give the government a bit of it. But make sure the majority goes to the community and you integrate the community to the extent that they would be the security of the land. That's the best. I think that would be one of the things they can do. Obviously, you train some of them on how to manage the cows and stuff, obviously. And then I've been to a few lines. I like the plants because I can, I, I can observe that they actually practice not over farming on any particular place. So they, I can observe like there's ridges that have been gone down. So they found them last year and they moved over to the place which will allow the soil to rejuvenate itself naturally. I didn't observe any fertilizers being used because I obviously I didn't visit any, any rice farms. The little maize farms that I went to that was what's it called when you went to Dada? Daddy and and uh Medwire. okay. So we went to those with flat land, beautiful places, beautiful people met the the head of of the of the village there. So all I can say is I've been I can just thank Allah for giving me this opportunity as well to come out to do myself. And hopefully we get to do something with this society, especially your state that would help us move to the next level <coughs> in relation to agribusiness in Nigeria because we lose a lot of money because it's informal. It's a very, very informal business. And coming from an IT background, I could just easily identify all the processes. And data collection is one of the things that I believe would help this grow because we don't actually even know the amount of cows we have. We don't know how much we're feeding the cows. So there's so many things that's lacking that IT would help because it would not allow us to plan better. How many fields do we need to grow? How many cows should we really allow in the environment because we have the data to do the analysis. So I think with my IT experience and my six years of retraining myself, I'm making myself more Nigerian. I think I'm, I've got the right formula with, with the South African partners fully and solely believe behind me. I think I've got the right formula and I hope I'm able to work with your Emirates and I hope you'll be able to advise me on how to go about doing things better and I hope I don't take too much of time. Let me... I'll prepare this for you, it's like my profile, the, the what's it called, the, uh, the profile of the technical partners, and then the, not this agreement, but like just a community agreement that we can use. Obviously that's subject to, subject to reputation and whatever that is required.